Hello, everyone. Uh, Just us, <laughs> us regular old folks there here. You go. <laughs> there you go. I don't... Uh, and then I cast the mind blank spell on myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's every half hour. It really is. Yes. So. How do you have so many spell slots? It's For incredible, real? isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. All right. Good old notes. Woo! We got quite a few <clears throat> queued up here. So lovely to be hanging back out with you all, of course. Um, for anyone joining us here tonight, episode hey, 169 no, of Stormfall. Um, oh, chicken wow, wow. Oh, yeah. Yes. Did you say chicken? Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there are eggs involved. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> man, I don't have an opening scene because, jeez, we just, the story's just, you know, really, I was just super consumed with getting, like, all the intricate things put together for the night <laughs> in the next couple of seconds. <laughs> But we'll just say that the story is speaking for itself so well that I didn't need mm -hmm. to put together an opening mm. scene. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but truly it is. It's it's incredible. Parney has um, begun to call out to all of the different folks to bring them in on this uh, magical Zoom call, basically. Um, <clears throat> reaching out to different people and kingdoms and uh, governments and everyone that they can that they've had an impact on across the whole campaign to date to come forward for this uh, and join them for this final epic battle uh, to confront the Athas that's been with them since the beginning, really. Um, <clears throat> as the magical Zoom call was up and running, though, Katrina Pendare, thankfully, rolled well enough in the background to detect that there was um, a little bit of um, interference uh, in this call. So someone was attempting to peer in or otherwise uh, manipulate it in some way. So she cut the signal, leaving the Stormfall Coalition with all its allies called forth kind of high and dry. Thankfully, Sterling Sam always has a backup plan. Always. <clears throat> and so, um, at the very end of last session, Nala informed the group, well, there is a backup plan. Follow me, and um, I'll lead the way to wherever is next. And so we'll pick up right there. Um, let me see if I can get some fun... Uh, woodland uh, music up here yes. since we're at the keep. Um, I think this is the one I was using the other day. I might have turned it down. I'm sorry, viewers. There we go. Sometimes I don't quite get to it fast enough. Ooh, that's nice. I like that one. Okay, I'm going to quickly put this in Zoom for our wonderful players. Just in case you want a little subtle, hopefully subtle background noise. I think it's subtle for the most part. There's some crescendoing bird and, and cricket <laughs> action at one point. I, I live for like... crescendoing birds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, okay, Nala, hearing out to all of you. Um, come this way. Follow me. Okay. Kaylin will follow. All right. Hmm. Um, is anyone staying behind here to keep, or is everyone sort of like heading to whatever this next place is? I'm following. I'll go. Yeah, I'll, see you. <laughs> I'll, I'll go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, Nala um, heads outside. She steps out of the keep. Oh, <laughs> She steps out of the keep and uh, <clears throat> and you begin to follow. Gosh, this was um, I'm trying to think of the time of day. I believe 
this was the following morning that she had everything set. Um, so it's maybe 11, 1130 or so. And you step outside into the, the warm late spring weather. Um, Nala heads out of the front of your keep and uh, looks at the sky um, and the sun and chooses, uh, lines herself up accordingly and begins walking slightly off to the right. Um, not out towards the main street, but instead mostly off to the right, almost in that uh, direction um, where everyone has had a couple ceremonies. I think the one to lay Rixie's seed, to have to plant it, to grow here, uh, is in this direction, as well as the cleansing ritual for um, Mallow. I think currently resides on Aaronwood. And uh, off you go. You begin heading in that direction. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, um, not talking too much, but walking at a very, very brisk pace. Uh, you can all keep up. You're all adventurers and, and have the, the uh, athleticism to do so. But it's a hurried pace. There's a lot of wild growth currently that is as azalea has been trying to bring this section back to life with um plants and, and creatures um and uh, at one point nala calls out to um azalea uh, looks back at all of you uh, azalea um, a guardian if may i uh and um, Azalea, now reformed with um, magic, looking a little bit uh, more, a um, little older in years here. Switch over here so our peeps can see as well. Um, steps forth, um, has a bow sort of at her side in her hand, uh, but not drawn or anything dangerous like that. She steps forward, and, and Nava um, gives a bow. And Azalea, she's the, I'm sorry, she, she's the <laughs> uh, nice. bow on her back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> Nala asks, um, um, Guardian I, I, um, of, of the land, uh, can, can you um, grant us, please, a safer a faster passage through your land here there's there's uh, an area and she begins to describe an area just outside of the perimeter of your land 500 acres of land um and and we need to get there in a hurry is there any way that's if if i know you're you're busy and azalea kind of nods her head yes i will make this so he turns to the rest of you and says, My work here is nearing completion, and uh, if I find and feel this land to be safe, then I will do my best to join you. Okay. Uh, walks just turns rather than fading into a tree turns and walks elsewhere into the forest out of sight quick um obscured by branches and such the forest around you 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 find yourselves and as long as you look around and, and things start to move and, and tree trees pulling up roots and, and walking just off to the side by five feet ten feet on either side putting their roots underground um, grass springs up and, and almost uh, it's as though the wind is blowing the blades of grass um, aside uh, as it walks along the, gra the earth itself. <clears throat> um, Eric shouts over to Devanya, metal doesn't do that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just saying. You're... Your point is... <laughs> Metal isn't weird. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and how is it not weird? It's normal. It's logical. It's... 
predictable. And while wood has many factors, is it not also logical and predictable sometimes? It's walking! Is <laughs> it? <laughs> She just shakes her head. <sighs> okay. <laughs> the forest continues to sort of move and almost part ways ahead of you, as you can see. A nearly straight path begins to wind over the, the gentle slopes of, of your land here. Uh, the trees, as they part, begin to form, uh, stretch their branches out to interconnect. And leaves bloom that uh, in these these newly formed trees, creating um, a, a canopy a, a, of a protective canopy of sorts, moderately dense. You can see light squeak through here and there uh, between all the leaves rustling in the wind as as the wind kind of passes through them. And you have this this beautiful plant life archway uh, path to walk through your keep, but. As this is all spreading out and separating, you do realize that you, you find yourselves um, almost in a, in a section that you, you haven't really traveled too much here at the keep. You've been this way a couple times for these rituals, but um, it's not the normal path that you walk on. It's a little bit, uh, you know, trees still massive that, that, that survive the onslaught. Uh, no dead bodies, no undead bodies around here. And uh, you begin walking and heading that direction um, at a brisk pace set by Nala. She thanks, you know, Dahlia and takes lead again to walk. Um, as you walk through this area, is there anything you all want to, you know, discuss or just eat feet behind Nala? Just, uh, I mean, I know that we have, you said we haven't been this way before. I mean, is it just typical forest? I mean, uh, yeah, you've been uh, partly this way. You've been here only a couple times for the two rituals, the Mallow ritual and the Brixie seed, seed planting ritual. But um, it's otherwise sort of off the, the, the trodden path. Blueberry might be accustomed to this. Blueberry does a perimeter check regularly. <laughs> but yeah, it's just. Um, Forest that's powered by all this magical energy and growing huge, but it's fresh growth. But it's just an opportunity to walk and talk if you want to, is what it is. So if you don't have any chatting, um, I'm going to. Uh, it was a segue too for, for Brixie. <laughs> but she's not here. So. Womp, womp. Um, okay, so you all continue on through. Let me close out um, Azalea's image here. Mm, okay. You continue walking through. I'm just going to, I've got us in this other format. I'm going to be sharing out some images just to kind of reconnect a bit to these these wonderful NPCs okay. as we go through. Uh, we have um, Nala. And... Um, She's leading the way. This is slightly younger Nala when you first met her. She's, you know, a bit older, more more uh, matured look now. But she hustles ahead of all of you, guiding the path. Um, the wind that's been blowing through the trees, uh, the trees are, are, again, acting as sort of a protective canopy, just in case. You are walking for quite a while. Um, you're going to be walking for, you know, an hour and 40 minutes or so at this brisk pace. So you are hiking through your land to get towards the end. As you near the end, the trees are back to normal size out here almost. And the canopy, you can see up ahead a couple hundred feet where the canopy ends. That seems to be the end of this land under uh, Azalea's watch and control. Um, so as the canopy begins to fade, you can really feel how strong the wind has gotten. It's really picked up. It's whipping around quite a bit. Um, a lot of uh, <clears throat> new leaves and um, even branches getting tussled about. Very strong winds with, with big gusts of winds, too. It's blowing at a, at a to a degree, which is a little difficult to hear every so often. If someone's talking to you, you've got to like pause or turn your head away from the wind to hear. 
and you exit your property. The brush clears after another five or ten minutes walking through this forest. And you are at a gentle slope upward that peaks up to uh, the, the top of this hill. Um, just makes a beautiful skyline. And you see standing up there a couple of figures um, walking down over the slope on the other side. But the familiar Scarlet Shuffle Trot stands atop this hill. And Nala, seeing her, hustles extra quick up to the top of the hill with all of you in tow. Come up and you see Scarlet. Um, sorry, let me close this. Share out Scarlet. I think I've seen this before. Um, there she is. Hi! <laughs> hey, you're here. You're all here. Come here, come on. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> it's good to see you. Scarlet. It's good to see you. <sighs> I, I'm so glad you're all safe. I, I was really worried that um, there's just so much happening now. But you're here. Um, I was, you know, updated um, about whatever was going on there. Communication. Something trying to get in? I, I don't know. Let's thank goodness Sterling and Sam had a, a second plan. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one what I'm ready, ready to do. Um, maybe just after a couple more people do it. Um, yeah. Uh, and, what? Um, and Nala, you know, kind of looks back and, and then walks over behind Scarlet to some of the other people on the other side of the slope. And, and Scarlet's like, ah, yeah, so, um, you have to go, uh, well, come on. <laughs> and she gestures for you to follow. <laughs> and, um, follow. as you kind of go over the slope, you see that this is actually, uh, the river, you can hear the river nearby. Uh, the one that cuts across the front of Zambora. You're maybe, you know, an hour and a half away from Zambora currently. Um, but the river is at the bottom of this sheer cliff that drops down. You know, the hill comes up to an end and, and you're, she's kind of like looking down nervously. <laughs> uh, um, so, um, that's, we have to go down there. Um, uh, and, um, and Nala comes back up. Right. Uh, I'll explain. Uh, it, it's going to be all right. Council Parson, it's going to be all right. Uh, so, um, as is typically the fashion with, um, with Star, uh, Starling Sam, uh, there are certain safety protocols in place uh, to access where we need to go. Um, so there's, uh, an entrance to, uh, an, um, an extra dimensional space that we're heading to. And, uh, the entrance is down there. Um, and, and again, you look over, you gauge maybe it's like 160, 180 feet or so down, uh, to the river's edge. There's maybe like eight feet of river on either side of, uh, it's just in the bottom of this kind of trench. Um, so, um, to avoid, uh, um, accidents and people stepping in there when they shouldn't, uh, Starling Sam put a few, um, um prerequisites on, on being able to enter the, the actual portal. Uh, so if, A, you have to be going at a certain speed, um, to enter it. Uh, so if someone's walking by or 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 flying about, there won't be birds and such going everywhere, uh, and it's pretty fast. Um, you can either uh, fly that fast or you can fall, um, whichever you prefer or capable of. Uh, it's one person at a time. Um, uh, the entrance is about uh, this the part. It's going to be all right. And she looks over to Scarlet again. Entrance is about 10 feet uh, both the ground there by the river's edge. Um, and she kind of points to a few of like the large stones that make up the bed, uh, the sides of the river. Um, right. So that's that. So you have to go very fast and then it's about 10 feet away. So it's a bit scary. Um, but you know, there's a few people have already done it and, um, it's our turn coming up. Uh, and 
you know, some people, some people would rather do it with someone else, but you can't. So, um, I'm going to go ahead because, uh, um, I have to. Please. Yep. Mm. Hey. How fast do we have to go to get into, um, into it? It's about, you know, fallen speed. So, from what height? So Up here. Uh, terminal velocity depends on your cross section. Nice. <laughs> so, what you're saying is that if we don't fall fast enough, we're gonna go splat. Right. I. I. So. Okay. Get a good jump. Um. Or fly, and you can fly just downward really fast. Um. I. But I'll, I'll show you. I'll show, it's. 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 Um. This. Star on Sam, you know, she do she's on she's got this. Um as long as you jump from here you'll be safe. Just don't do don't spread out your arms and legs and try and slow down or you'll head off in one direction or the other or perhaps not be going quite fast enough. So just sort of so cannonball. We have it. to put our arms and legs to our side. Right. Okay. Ah. You get to. Right. Okay. Just make you know, make yourself a ball, into a ball. All right, like so, a circle. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, uh. Exactly. So, uh, all um, I'm gonna go first. Uh, well, not first. Sure. As much as I know, but just uh, keep an eye. Uh, we don't want any surprises. If you see something, jumping out of somewhere and coming after you, just get in there and don't let them follow. Um. Well, are we? Are you expecting someone to start running after us? Uh, I always expect someone to run after me. So. Okay. All right. It's fair. Hmm. Uh, please. Uh, after you. Very well then. All right. I'll see you on the other side. Um, and she uh, takes a few steps back and just kind of leaps backwards and. So you're kind of if you're watching, you know, tucked a little bit left and right, she she balls up. And then about ten feet off the ground, um, just sort of almost um you know, out of nowhere appears a disc, a flat circular disc of magic uh energy. Um typical magical circle. But as she falls through it, it almost looks like a pool of water but nice and softly, and she disappears. Um and Scarlet saying, <laughs> Wait, um, not pretty soon. That looks awesome! Uh, Aaron Wynn runs uh, and jumps off. Oh! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> you disappear uh, as well. Uh, that seems very unsafe. <laughs> I, that's what I've been saying, um, but. I mean, I guess, I guess that's the point, so no one accidentally gets in there or whatever, but, you know, I just kind of, I don't like plummeting to the ground that quickly. Hmm. Hmm. Are you okay? Is that... No. <laughs> but I can two people it. go down at the same time? There's only one person at a time, that's just what one. Nalo said. I mean, if I just see a few more people do it, then I'll, I'll probably just stay. As okay. long as they're not like evaporating into nothing yet. I'm sure they're coming safe. Um, I can like fly on my broom uh, like under you until you get to there. You know what I mean? Like when you're jumping off, I can fly with you and if you know, if something goes wrong, I can catch you. In rooms. <laughs> what, Rowan? Rowan just jumped on. Oh, nice! Oh. While the conversation's happening, just just mm -hmm. takes off. Into the disc, you disappear. Um, no, maybe, no, maybe if we're too close and then something goes wrong, because then we're too close, and I I'll just... <clears throat> Just go. 
And she looks over the edge. And I would recommend going head first because if something goes wrong, at least it'll be quick. And then Garrett no, comes off. No, no, Garrett! Don't... Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> head first, Garrett. <laughs> One way of uh, looking at it. Um, All right. I, I wouldn't do that. Don't go head first, Shuffle huh? Trout. Please. Kind of turns to look at you with some <laughs> start falling off the end. Woo! He disappears into the disc. Board starts pacing back and forth. At first, when whoever went first, he he crawled on his belly towards the cl the cliff face nice. and just looked at the cliff face. Oh. And he yeah. sort of backed up on it. On the... I know Are that you feeling. Okay, <laughs> He's just, I don't know. I don't know. And then he start. they takes a running jump. And like, I don't know. <laughs> hey, wind whipping it's, across your face. This is insane. <laughs> that does not help me feel better. <laughs> and Mort Are you okay, Divanya? Um, it's okay to use our wings, right? Like, you're going to use your broom. and I'm, I'm not going to use my broom to get in there because I don't no if it's i don't think it's fast enough okay um it's gonna jump i think yeah um do you want to go first or should i go first sure i can i can go first uh okay. caleb will jump into the thing okay Down not down. head first <laughs> Devon is going to jump in after her butt first. Nice. Amazing. Hopefully not landing on her stomach. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Okay. Yep. Boom, boom. Each of you goes in. Okay. Is that... Um, who's left? Anyone? Anyone That's left? It. I mean, other than the people that aren't, like, play, you know, Rain and Blueberry. Okay, Blueberry probably would have just been like, okay, and 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 gone in. <laughs> so, um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm putting a tweet out, and that's um, got me sidetracked. So, everyone's going in, in, yeah, yeah, you know me, yeah. <laughs> All yeah, right, so everyone's in. <laughs> everybody makes their way through. Let me close up Scarlet here. <laughs> everyone's in the hole. <laughs> <Yahoo! laughs> We're, We're all, all in. in. On episode 169. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <Woo -hoo>! Beware. <laughs> Um, okay, you all, uh, one at a time, are ejected into another <laughs> plane of existence, um, but horizontally instead of vertically. Your speed has been yeah. slowed through the magic of the portal, but you're still coming out at, like, you're going to be ejected, like, a good five feet. Um, <laughs> but thankfully, there's, um, uh, actually, let me think, there would... Yeah. I'm imagining like in Monsters Inc. when they go mm -hmm. through that door that's laying down flat. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, into Paris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With a little bit of force. <laughs> kind of uh, dancing on one foot as you you just catch your balance. Um, Garrick, you know, kind of coming out like ah, <laughs> but you you do a tumble and you catch yourself, not a problem. Um. And you find yourself in this really strange, strange city. It's a bit surreal around you. Um, a city shattered. You're right near the edge of where this city is entirely shattered here. And um, stone and debris falling down off the city. Um, birds in flight all stopped perfectly still in time nothing's moving it's like a snapshot was taken of this island as it fell apart and here it it stays there are beams of light from a sun coming off uh from the east there and they highlight little bits of debris and lint in the air that are just locked in place and is it, flo is it floating or is it, it is in the water? Well, as you take a peek down, you can see it's, it is, in fact, up above. 
flying in the sky. Time to bring this city down, fellas. Let's go. <laughs> nice, nice. Get another Oops. floating city. Let's go. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, God, Frank. One was not Let's enough. go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and, of course, here with you, I'm so sorry, I've got two pages I've got to go through with our images. <laughs> um, uh, standing with you is um, I mean, Sam. Yeah. Well, hey. Hello. You made it. Uh, <laughs> one at a time. That's everyone. That's all the heads, right? Uh, hey. Uh, where? Uh, where is this, Sam? Oh, all uh, right. Hey, uh, welcome to Anderset. Uh, I'm um, sorry, Aiden set. Uh, this is in its own place. Um, it's uh, outside of the typical dimensions. It's hmm. a city stopped in time, as you can tell. So we're safe here. We have a little bit of extra time to plan and figure things out as we're set apart from time on the prime material plane. And you're 100% sure of this? Aye. It's one of my safe houses uh, of sorts. Um, mm -hmm. Safe place to be and plan. And, and uh, it, a couple things of note. Um, the city itself, uh, don't you move? So don't uh, try and open doors or um, windows or move anything that's here. It's not going to happen. Um, also, don't drop anything. Anything that falls off your person will it just, um, after about five seconds, uh, it just becomes part of the city forever frozen in time. So, uh, if it's anything valuable to you, hang on to it. You got five second rule. Pick it up before then, or it's here forever. Does that include poop? Kidding. Uh, <laughs> sadly, you might find that it does. <laughs> mm, that's a shame. I don't bring people here very often, but um Sure. Hold it in, Kaylin. <laughs> Do you have to go? You should have gone before we left. I, I don't need to go. <laughs> it just popped into my head. I, I had to ask. So. <laughs> very interesting. You bring your dates here, Sam, sometimes. Oh, just the special ones. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, um, we do have a place uh, to get situated, and um, as everyone else arrives, uh, there's a few that um, we pulled in a bit, a bit faster than you, and we should move in case um, I'm sure others will come through here pretty soon. Okay. Um, just follow me. And uh, yeah, you begin. Let me sorry, just for viewers. Um, as we're walking, mm -hmm. I'm gonna catch up with Sam and just be like, "Did you make this place, <laughs> or did you find it? Because if you made it, I want to know how." Mm -hmm. Um, well, you know what? If we, uh, I'll give you just a wee. Just a bit of the story. I'll just say that um, uh, it's a little bit of both. Uh, I was this from a very long time ago uh, when I used to travel with some companions. Mm, you might be familiar with some of them. Uh, I don't want to name drop. One of them knew a wee bit about time and such and magic around that. And um, if we make it through all this, Perhaps I'll share the rest of the story with you. It's, it was quite an adventure. Do the name drop. Do the name drop. <laughs> Does it start with an M? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's, well, wait, which M are you thinking of? Well, she says, uh, yeah, the story will make you very tense. Yeah, let's go. Ward will have a little <laughs> bit of concerned look on his face looking at the city. It's like, <laughs> please tell me there's no one there. 
Oh, you, no, uh, just the people uh, I've allowed so far. There's a few but people. But I mean, there's, there's no one in the city trapped in time. No, no. Um, thankfully, uh, not. There's some wildlife around still, but we were able to get the people out a very long time ago. No horrifying sights of people trapped in time was right. It's <laughs> safe to walk about freely. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so let's head uh, to our so grand room set up uh, for us. Um, and a couple of our friends have uh, already, already arrived. And uh, the way. All right. So off you go let's see who's already here what's the weather like here dan <laughs> oh uh it's um a little bit temperate it's uh feels a little closer to uh maybe like a couple months ahead mid, mid summer somewhere around there not super mm -hmm. hot but very toasty there's it's weird to pass through you're able to, you know, breathe the air and everything else, but it feels more like it's a, some sort of magical um, thing that's taken over versus, like, your typical breathing. Um, you do feel the warmth of, of the sun a bit. Again, I guess if you... Make a perception, Jack, if you would, I guess. Okay. All right. Oh, <laughs> well, um, I... Sure, I will definitely do that. I With somehow the dice. forgot that <laughs> dice were even a thing, apparently. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, we'll just throw it on the desk. Ooh. <laughs> uh, that is a... Okay, move out of the way. Move out of the way. Boom, move dice. out of the way. Yeah. Move out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I said move. I... Uh, Oh, wow, her perception. Oh, no, there it is. I was looking at performance. Uh, 17 total. Yeah, so, uh, you can also tell it doesn't feel like natural sunlight on you. Again, it feels like the imitation via magic of what it would be like on this particular day. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you all wind your way through this um, moderately simple city, what's left of this airborne part here. And into that grand building that's in the center of this image, um, navigating up stairways through, you know, some doors that are closed over. You have to kind of like pinch through um, and, and so forth, uh, up a number of stone steps in here. And uh, until you arrive at a, a grand room open that has this really long, it was probably a dining table at one point as there are some little candelabras, uh, little candle holders set up along it in the way many dining tables uh, and nobles' homes are. Um, but um, now there are uh, long strings of um, tethered objects. You see a couple of people that um, are cloaked and hooded like they work for, for uh, Sterling Sam. Um, that have some objects on the table, but each of them is tethered by a thick string, one to the other, to the other, to the other, to a person, um, to keep everything in contact so it doesn't become part of the city, you might imagine. Uh, oh, right. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of people here. Mm -hmm. um, one, I don't know if you'll uh, recognize them. <laughs> Um, let me think. I no think one of, uh, let's see, you all met Orin, so you were all in uh, Everdight. In fact, I think you, oh gosh, who's left from that? I mean, Kaylin, right? Mm hmm. Okay. So maybe, Kaylin, let me just close out some of these other ones. I'll keep trying to keep the city up. Might recognize a um, very noble looking woman. Um, off at the uh, edge of a table, um, alongside someone else that has their back turned to you. Um, <clears throat> this um, woman, uh, make a history check. See if, if you remember. Unless you, Stephanie, remember, then I'll just say. 
You're no, I mean, uh, no, no, I don't remember. Okay. okay, all right. Caitlin's good at history, so let's see here. Okay, all right, that's a 22 total. Okay, um, this is Alindra. She is the queen and ruler of um, Evernight, uh, where you all met um, Orin after Tosa and everything. Oh, um, and the younger sons. And um, as this is sort of clicking, it's jogging your memory. Um, the woman that was next to her turns around and you recognize her as Kianava, her one of her high aides, her first aide, and, and really good friend. <clears throat> Here we go. Uh, they both have a very powerful and commanding presence. Um, Olindra, just as one that clearly takes charge knows sort of what she's doing she's directing people uh around to manage things and kianava just has like a very strong arcane presence powerful presence <clears throat> and um they don't come over anything yet they're busy doing things but you see them all across the way in case any of you want to do anything oops um, excuse me sorry about that i think caitlin would probably go up and say, you know, uh, just kind of wait until they're done with whatever they're doing to look up. And mm -hmm. um, Alindra, Kianava, I, it's good to see you again. Alindra turns around. Hey, man. She looks up at everyone else. It's a pleasure. You've not brought your friends. Oh, um, these are my com traveling companions right now. I, we've there's been changes in the party since you last met us. Some have went on to enjoy other things, and others, um, well, you know, we've lost a couple. Hmm. I see. Yeah, I'm glad that you've made it here. Sterling Sam has <clears throat> informed us of matters at hand. And we're here to fight for the Prime and the Fae. I'm honored to have you here. <clears throat> you get kind of... Um, as Kianavo is there, anytime she's there, she, there's a bit of a, a light breeze that, that's um, comes for us. Very perfumed and a very nice smelling um, oft of, of that comes along with her. I mean, as you're sort of engaging with the two of them, uh, everyone else back across the room, um, let's see, you say... Boop, 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 boop. Sorry. Sorry, uh, viewers, I'm just going to be cycling through some images here. <laughs> uh, you see... Um, a young, uh, young man that you may or may not recognize from Black Rock Landing. Uh, it's Kylos. Like, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so he'll re recognize some, I think all of you except Rowan. Uh, so you, you all just kind of helped him with um, at Black Rock Landing. He guided you out to the docks mm -hmm. uh, when you fought the Daveriness, um, the Lorna. He's the one that was working with um, the lion. Um, right. Be clear, uh, Dan. He's mm -hmm. he's like a mature adult on the inside, right? Yes. Yeah. He's a couple hundred years old, I think, on, on the on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, Aren't we all? Yeah. After twenty twenty. Oh, word. You've you've all made it. Mm. Oh, good, 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 good. Kind of scans you all with a cool, steady look. Um, right. Ren is, uh, of course, going to be here. Not yet, though. Looks like you're all here and with, with someone new. I'm I'm so sorry. And he comes up to you, Rowan, and, and holds up a hand. I'm uh, Kylos, uh, Riddenmacher. It's a pleasure. Ro Rowan will shake Kylos' hand and then curtsy. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> this is, uh... This is it, huh? Uh, 
What do you think your chances are? Uh, who's I don't know. Uh, really good, obviously. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, kick his butt. Yeah. Never tell me the odds, kid. <laughs> <You're right>. <laughs> <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> uh, <clears throat> you're right you're right uh, right and we've got yeah okay uh, <laughs> i'll be um around if if you need me um i'm looking forward to hearing what 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 you have to say hoping it's it's some some good news <sighs> Um, all right, and Kylos heads off. Thank you for the raid, by the way, Brambleberry Games. Uh, um, how was your stream this evening? <laughs> Close out a few more of these <laughs> windows. All right. Um, okay. Uh, so I guess we'll jump back as we're we're still waiting for some other uh, people to arrive. Um, the rest of you are here in the room. Uh, Kaylin, you get a little caught up with them. Do you come back to the group after you have a little chat with them? Yeah, yeah. She would especially go and say say hello to Kylos and, you know, mm. greetings. Um, nothing special, but yeah. Okay. Um, so you see um, a couple more, like, hooded, masked individuals arrive. Uh, again, likely working for Sterling Sam. And um, then, um, let's see, what where are we? Mm, 11. Oh, man, I was like, ooh, maybe I can do a bathroom break drop. But no, nope, we're way too early. Um, the next person that you see that you recognize, uh, where are we? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, yes. Um, well, I'll just see if you do recognize her. Um, a beautiful, beautiful woman. I, a lot of attractive people you know anyway. You are a <laughs> lot of attractive people. But there is something... You know about, it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's something about this woman that, um, is just captivating. Absolutely captivating. Uh... I'm going to say that it's it's not like in a, a normal attraction. So outside of like whom everyone may be attracted to, there's just something compelling about this individual anyway. Um, it might be a familiar sensation for you, Kaylin, and maybe Mort was there, I think, when uh, they met. Um, duck -a -duck -a -duck -a -duck -a. I want to say Erwin was would have been there too. Right, Erwin, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, this is um, one of Winifred's daughters. Oh, Bella okay. Sue's, okay. Mm -hmm, Bella Sue's Donka. Uh, just got to send a quick message. I'm so sorry. Um. Okay. Kind of glides in across the room. Bella says it's good to have you. Oh. Thank you. Um just shyly. <laughs> Please uh sit down. Uh, okay. Shy again. Shyly steps away a little bit and pulls up a seat, like way down, one of the table. <laughs> I mean, doesn't it already pull out? But she sits down. There. Yeah. Just seems you remember she was like awkwardly shy mm -hmm. uh, when you met her before. Shy, uh, shy. <laughs> All right. Um, again, there's a little bit of hubbub. You're welcome to chat with anyone that's already here. But if you don't wish, I mean, let me know if anyone wants to. If not, I'll just, well, time will pass and another person will arrive. Um, I think we're probably go up to Kylos. I, mm -hmm. so how is uh, Ren doing? Mm, well, he's um, he's Ren. <laughs> uh, very. He's been looking forward to this quite a bit. Yeah. He's doing. He's together. You know, sometimes he has these spirals where he's just like, you know, he regrets what he did, and he and it haunts him. 
and sometimes he's like gets in those really deep spirals of uh, not feeling like he deserves you know i don't i don't think he's looking for forgiveness or anything but he just it gets really dark sometimes um but he's he's doing all right i think glad i'm around uh i, I think that i know i can can't understand his exact situation but i I've, I've been through some of that myself, so usually we can sit down and talk, and kind of refocus his, his energy into something a little more, you know, positive. Making amends and just doing the best he can. He's been getting better overall, but, you know, he's still struggling sometimes. But this, I think this is the big thing in his mind that, that he's looking to use to make things right. And I'm glad that you're there for him, Carlos. I'm sure that he is too. Thanks. And I hope so. I, I hope so. That's all. Okay. All right, let's see. Oops. <laughs> um okay next up um and again just stop me at anyone if any of you have any that you want to do any rp with anyone oh right uh i don't remember if this is your picture or not staff i can't tell but um yeah ben ben shows up yeah, I didn't do that picture, okay. but it was a reference, so I, I mm, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, Caitlin will go over to Finn and, and give him a, a big hug. Ah, uh, yeah, as soon as he sees you, he starts running. Aww. <laughs> Scoops you up. Oh. Mm, there. She you know, holds the... your face. Oh, she yeah. start to talk. And you, she gets... <laughs> <laughs> um how was the trip ah <laughs> uh, i don't know did you have to um go through like a really crazy thing to get here the portal oh yeah yeah like in the center of that wild you know yeah tornado thing <laughs> yeah it was it was uh pretty out there but... mm. I'm glad that you're here. Ah, uh, I'm glad that we're here. This is it? Yeah, I think so. I don't ever want him to do to anyone what he did us. Done to so many. <sighs> hmm. We, um, we've got this, right? Yeah, we do. Should give them another hug. And a kiss. Nice. Okay. Um, next up, I don't have an image for her. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can, uh, for those that traveled with her, you can almost tell by the footfalls. <clears throat> As around the corner and through the door arrives Emrasina. Wings tucked behind her. And Mercedes here. I want to run up and give her a big hug. <laughs> She's gonna hug you back. <laughs> so good to see you again. And you too, my friends. <laughs> I am so glad to see that you're still alive. <laughs> of course, why wouldn't I be? <laughs> 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 That's amazing. Not like you've seen me die before. Why? I know, right? No, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? Amazing. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Em doesn't know. Mm -hmm. I think Blueberry is going to run up too. Blueberry will kind of like, oh. Oh, my dear I'm Blueberry. Scratches behind his ears. How, how are you, Marcina? I, I am amazed. 
I see so many new faces. Um, how have you been? It's been a journey. Of course. Um, I'm sorry for not being in touch as much as I should have been. Um, I was a little bit trapped under the city for a little bit, but I am out now. Everything will be okay. Okay. We didn't miss much. <laughs> 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 nice. How can I not have like missed much? Chuckle at that. Oh. <laughs> uh, mm, that's amazing. Okay, well, we'll, is... give, we'll give her a hug. Let's give her a big old hug right mm. back. <laughs> Are uh. you sure that I haven't missed much? And she gives her a wink. <laughs> I'll just a few things, but Mm. It's all good now. <clears throat> I hear that a certain lich is, uh, you know, he will. This group and everyone gathered here will make sure that Ethaz doesn't have a hold in this world or or on anyone much longer. That is good. I just know that you have my undying support. As you do mine, friend. And what of the new members? Oh, I, this is Rowan, uh, Garrick. Uh, Hi. This is Imersina. She used to travel with us and it's still famous. does in a way. Pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you too. Both of you. Are you sure they're up for this task? She kind of whispers to Kaylin and nudges her on the shoulder, just kind of in jest, <laughs> you know, just kind of they poking at her. have proven themselves, so they're fine. You know I trust you. Always. And I trust you. Mm -hmm. Where is um, Emil? Mm. Oh, uh, he's fine. Uh, he's kind of off doing his own thing uh, with Sterling Sam, which will kind of motion towards, with their head towards Sterling Sam. Uh, <laughs> doing some, thank you, Dan, uh, doing some. <laughs> You know what Emil does best, <laughs> uh, but he's, he seems happy. So he deserves some happiness. Yes, he does. <laughs> Are you? She, she like kind of does like a little. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> nice. She's so happy to see everybody. <laughs> Just like. So you're really doing okay in the city. Group hug. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm I'm just gonna join for this one. Um, <laughs> um she kind of looks over her shoulder at Kaylin. Um do you want the truth? Of course. While my brother has taken control of some of the city, I do still have allies and we're willing to help no matter what. I'm, I'm sorry for not keeping in contact, mm. especially for a while. I, um, like I said, I... I was locked up under the city. Seems By like who? your brother? 
<laughs> yeah. But, um, it's okay. Some people do not like being challenged, especially when they're wrong. And Marcina, do you need help? <clears throat> I mean, after this is over, do you need us to help you? Kick his butt? <laughs> that? Uh... <laughs> she kind of laughs out loud a little bit at that. I would appreciate the help for taking control of Ever Everness. Um, but for now, I think there are higher matters at stake here. And just know that <laughs> despite me not being able to contact you guys to the best of my abilities, um, kind of shuffles her feet. I'm, I'm here for you. <clears throat> and I will bring what I can to help. And then we'll give her another hug. <laughs> and as she's in the hug, she'll kind of whisper in her ear, all you have to do is just ask. You know that? I know. But first, we must take care of the lich. Because if we do not take care of this situation first, the whole world is at stake. You and I both know that. She hugs her tighter. Mm. All right. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> like it's been forever. I know. Oh, it oh my God. so much. <laughs> starting the um, reunion tour <laughs> nice. That's for, real. Yeah, for real <laughs> uh let's see um next up um coming through the door oh again it might only be kate no more was there or was there i think um the Aaron, yes ira has been summoned uh as per the arrangement oh. <laughs> for being saved yeah and yeah. she arrives um looks around and sees Kaylin and maybe recognizes Morton Aaronwin possibly as well. Oh, and Amersina. Um <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ira, um mm. thank you. I am honored that you heeded the call. I'm duty bound too. I'm here and uh, I will be of service. Um, okay. I. Do you. You don't not want to be here, right? Well. Whether I want to or not will depend on uh, what you all have to say at this okay. meeting, but I'm here. I'm not forgotten the freedom you've granted me, the life you gave back to me. Well, with the freedom, I, if what we have to say doesn't, doesn't, you know, you don't agree with, then you can leave. It's... Good to know. Thank you. She walks off. <laughs> um, next up, <laughs> um, Lilith's Cast Fury. Oh, oh, I don't think you've ever. I mean, I don't think you've ever shown a picture of Lilith, but maybe you have, and I just don't remember. No, I don't think I have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Um. I love it. Uh, she's um. Ben hold and then and then he comes up to you, Kaylin, and gives you like an overhand dwarf, dwarf and like a oh, you know. Oh, Kaylin will give her a hug. Mm, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh. Forget that. 
it's it hugs back with a couple of strong pats and, and a bit of a squeeze. Well, if I'm honored that you're here, how are you? Mm. Um, uh, faring, faring well. Um, recovery is, well, aside from the lower floors, is going well. And um, we're here to get some payback. Help the world and such. <laughs> of course. Thank you for being here. Mm. I appreciate it. Yes, if you're in need of any insights into your tactical plans, please see me. Absolutely. Mm. Where's the ale? Oh, <laughs> Kayla will definitely show her where the ale, where the ale is at. Nice. <laughs> they're the best one amazing <laughs> um there are some windows in this space and um a balcony on either side uh this is a um well it's a corner room so there's you know the, the two exterior walls each have a balcony and um <clears throat> while the city up here is is frozen in time and, and the land around in this extra dimensional space um Orin is able to earth glide through it. And so as you uh, as you hear the, the rumbling energy of a giant earth elemental, not just any earth elemental, mind you, but um, the parent of all earth elementals, um, Orin arrives. And peering up through the clouds where the city resides, the rest of his... Um, form well beneath those are our viewers just trying to keep all that organized a bit kind of glides up and out of the ground and behind him uh his two eldest oh Groot two of them <laughs> mm-hmm mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, and they're not really anyone to chat with. They're, they're a little bit far away, but you see them kind of earth gliding up, having arrived from the Feywild. He goes up for a minute. Let's see. Let's see. I think that's the end of this particular page. Who else did you summon here? All right. We have, uh, Finn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh. Your mom. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Next, um, <clears throat> you hear flapping of large wings. Outside the balcony, you look up and see a huge form blot out the sun as it flies around towards you, almost full speed towards the balcony. It's a silhouette against the, the brightness of the sun behind it. And as it approaches the balcony, it shifts form and lands into a smooth stride as a human. The roomkeeper, set Aww. in armored gear, has shifted form uh, into <laughs> this humanoid form here and, and sort of battle setup. Stands about ten and a half feet tall or so as he strides very smoothly into the room looking. Um, he doesn't even shift his head that much, but you just feel his perception scanning the room. This Rowan is... will let out a shriek, yell Rooney, and run over and give Rooney a big hug. <laughs> Slowly lifts an arm and puts it over the back of your shoulders and <laughs> gives a few pats. Rowan. Good to see you. Rooney, I'm glad you came. Yes, uh, the time is here. I'm glad you're here with me. Always. I'm going to scan the room, and uh, I will say that if anyone you know has anything they want to say or do, go right ahead. Otherwise, some more people are going to show up. Uh, Scarlet's here. Uh, Katrina came with you all. Um, oh, another individual comes into the room. 
I'm so sorry viewers as I sometimes forget to close out the old images um this woman kind of uh, strides in um full very confident stride across the room there are some little lights of pixies that seem to be buzzing about her she doesn't really give anyone a look she just kind of walks in and heads directly over um you oh, come on heads directly over to bella Sue's and sits down and oh. begins talking to bella Sue's. uh Kaylin, you probably remember at this point maybe m because you i think you were there if not Many of you, I think Mort too. Um, this is Sabby. Sabin is her full name, but Sabby Dalka, one of uh Winifred's other daughter. Um of course you may remember that um Sabby, oh my gosh, I have to look now. I'm pretty sure Sabby is uh I'll look I'll look it up. I'll look it up and get that info later. Uh, let's see. Savvy has arrived. Ah, mm. 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 uh, sorry. Go right ahead if anyone had anything. Oh. All right. So I'll get this, the procession. I'll keep it moving. <laughs> Next up, Tara from the city of Metz, the high elven woman that was a um, liaison between um, Tensor university and uh the city of metz also an ally of emile's and harper's but no one else knew that um she walks in and uh doesn't see too many people she knows but does seem to go over and talk to sterling sterling sam um who else do we have uh ah of course after that, um, you hear two sets of footfalls walking in. The first one is this um, older, oh. seemingly a high elf gentleman, which you've met and traveled with before. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and right behind Yaris uh, is Ormia. The two oh. of them arrive. And then we'll immediately go over to Ormia and probably give her a big hug. Yeah, Ormia will hug her back. It's good to see you guys again. Mercina is definitely going to do the same. Oh! <laughs> She'll <laughs> give her a hug. Oh, my too. old friend. <laughs> it's been too long. Too long. Way too long. <laughs> good to see you. I'm glad you're doing all right. You too. I suppose in these days, doing all right means a lot, but you know. <laughs> It is what it is. <laughs> Are you doing okay, Ormia? Uh, you know, city's under siege, but we do family okay. still okay? Yeah. Yeah, we're okay. 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 <sighs> good to have you. Thank you. Feels good to get out and adventure the right way <laughs> again. Well, I admit, I never thought that I would see you in this kind of way again. <laughs> it's nice to see you in this way instead of... We don't talk about that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, but it is nice. Yeah. Glad to be back. <sighs> Shall we kick this thing's butt? For... Yeah. 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 She looks at Kaylin. What do you think? Absolutely. <laughs> Getting the old band back together. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. Harris has gone to do standard, like, check all the points of, you know, ingress and egress in the room and, like, just kind of in military fashion get the laid land. Um, I do want to ask, speaking of getting the band back together, I didn't get the check. I'm so sorry, Ed. Uh, I'm going to ask you here. I forgot because we kind of came up last session and I entirely forgot. So that's on my, my, my bad. If you don't want to answer tonight, it's no problem. That's right. 
Um, a couple of things. Um, so one, uh, I should let you know that um, Aaron Wynn spent a nice night last night chatting with with Galathor. All yeah. of her spell slots. Yeah, she just like <laughs> dumping all of her <laughs> spell slots to do sending and then trying to have a combo just to catch up with Galathor, but also to see a couple of things. First, um, uh, is Galathor interested in coming back to assist? And, and it could be in whatever fashion, NBC or, or you or anything like that as a second thing, you know, battle-wise. I wouldn't make you role play like eight characters because you've got a few. <laughs> um, hmm. sure, I can. Uh, probably not tonight, but I can. Um, if if Galathor does show up later on, I can definitely take on Galathor. I'm just completely out of it today. Sorry. Oh, no, no worries, no worries. Uh, so I'm. I feel extra bad that I'm going to ask you about a few other <laughs> characters, <laughs> but same thing. No pressure. We can figure it out another day too. Um, let's see. Oh. Everyone, uh, I think Aaron Wynn or someone had asked uh, Garrick if Garrick's family had any connections or anything like that um, to to come help to. Uh, Garrick did have a couple of contacts. Um, hmm. Here's some traits. Nope, mm -hmm. it's in notes. Um, Wow. <laughs> Awkward. Um, I, I know I had this in here. <laughs> uh, oh, no. It's no problem if it's not readily available to you because I'm, I'm tossing it all, you know, putting you on the spot. <laughs> Don't worry about it. If it's not handy, I can check yeah, it out. Yeah, it should be in the dock, Dan. Oh, okay. Um, oh, good. Um, all right, well, we'll take a look at that. Um, I think there was also a question about, uh, I think, Galathor's contact, uh, Lafare, I think it was. Uh, if any of, the, any of the people that um, Galathor's friends with would want to it'd be an NPC that we could throw, you know, at someone. Uh, sure. I think you've traditionally role-played Lafare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, nice. <laughs> um, and lastly... Everyone was going to use sending a mental message to Felix to see if Felix would be interested in this, this grand final battle. <laughs> uh, yeah, Felix would probably join. Exciting. Chef's kiss. <sighs> ah. <laughs> um, awesome, awesome. Okay, how exciting. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, so in that case, would you mind if if Felix arrived? There's only a couple people left. Oh my goodness! Okay. So, walking through the door, as though you've seen a ghost. Felix, prepared for whatever's to come, steps in. Sunlight, illuminating his glorious form. <laughs> Felix has really got the oh hair God. and stuff, yeah. I mean, true, uh, true. He's <laughs> quite handsome. Um, steps through. And, oh and, and Felix steps in the room. Uh, Felix is probably a little bit more uh, worse for the wear. Um, <laughs> road is. weary, a little bit rugged looking. Felix mm. oh. absolutely running up to him and giving him a hug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can. Yeah, or Mia is too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah this is all the original, the OG, the OG group. We need to reveal now. Everyone's here. Em is gonna do the same. Aww, <laughs> yay! It's great to see you too, Emersina. You too, my friend. <laughs> I missed your cooking. <laughs> I think we all have. Uh, <laughs> I brought some snacks. I've got some trail mix. <laughs> Good. Um, Wonderful. I didn't see Was a it... kitchen on my way in, so maybe later. What is a trail mix? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, like, nuts and uh, fruits, dried fruits. Um, 
you know, a salty sweet kind of idea playing with that those two concepts. Huh. Something to eat on the road. Are you <laughs> doing okay, Felix? You look uh look a little rough hmm. if you don't mind me saying. Uh, yeah, I've been um been spending a lot of time traveling. Um trying to trying to get myself together. Um but I don't know when I when I got the message, I felt like one last time, right? Got to do it one mm. one last time. One more adventure. I Kayla will put both hands on kind of Felix's arms. I guess uh, if it ever gets too much, just let us know, okay? Thanks. Hmm. I'll teach um, you some mail. <laughs> I'm just going to give him some mail. Beautiful. Um, I'm going to say because Felix is joining the fray that, uh, and he's, you know, here, right? He's been cooking all this time and everything else that the trail mix, um, you have enough Felix to supply 12 people. And it is going to, it's been prepared in such a way that it has mm. all the benefits of a hero's feast. Yes! Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. That's some magic trail mix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Made it special for us. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in the room with you, without even seeing them, enter standing amidst everyone um, as though they just didn't want to be perceived until this moment. Winifred. And, oh. <laughs> oops, sorry, let me fix this image. Um, <clears throat> with, you know, beautiful, tall, statuesque form, um, sort of a, a darkness about her where it's, it's as though she could just vanish from your perception at any moment she wanted to. A cold blue steel <laughs> gaze um, that, that assesses your soul as it passes uh, across you. Um, Linifred arrived well. Best. Um, Kaylin, you're, you're heading over to, to bring Felix over to the ale. And you trip and stumble a little bit. Sure, sure. One of those yeah. pieces of poop you were asking about earlier. Mm, and that's where we'll take her by. Big sand. <laughs> They're the best. You gotta bring it around. Oh, uh, you about to trip over a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're the best. Yeah, I, I Would you rather to... trip over it or step in it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that was a good question. Mm -hmm. It's been there forever, so it's frozen in time. It, it's immovable. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep. How old is it? Does the smell remain? <laughs> Thankfully, no. <laughs> See, these are all valid questions, Dan. They really are. They Inquiring really are. minds want to know. Nice. The perpetual stink there. This is know. how you train in Arcana. You ask questions like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Thanks. Oh Professor, my God. If a poop is scrapped, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, okay, and with that, we'll take our bio break. So, for anyone that's new, uh, we take about a 10 minute uh, bio break. Um, we're playing Stormfall here. This is uh, we're towards the the very very end game, and this is a a gathering of their coalition and all of the people and groups and organizations and everything else that they've helped and interacted with over the entire campaign are coming together. They've summoned them to to pitch their you know uh, idea on how to confront that and and hopefully get everyone on board. So we'll take about 10 minutes for this bio break. We'll leave our audio hot so you can chat with us. Um, if you're new and you're having fun, um, we have a ton of D&D across the week. And if you're enjoying it, go ahead and give us a follow. You can catch our other stuff too. All right, we'll catch you all in about 10 minutes, maybe a little less because I've been talking. Catch you all shortly. <laughs> all right. Okay. I'm going to use this. <laughs>
right here. Hey, what would do? Hello, Rain. How are you?
Hello, friend. Hello, how are you? Tired, but I'm okay. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You're not ready? I'm not ready. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why you're saying that. No, for, you know what? Yeah, I think I think you're going to have the easier end of the bargain, I'm just saying. No. Well, we'll see. I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. What? My character meeting his dead girlfriend? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it could be hard. Hi, Frank. Yo. Oh. How was the party? It was nice. We carved pumpkins and listened to Halloween music, and then we started to listen to like old timey country. I'm just like, nope. But it, I do listen. To music. It'll be interesting to see what you consider old timey country. <laughs> uh, Hank William Jr. Oh well, I would. <laughs> okay, but real old timey would be Hank William Sr. <laughs> but continue. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, Brooks and Dunn. Okay, all right. That's yeah. Like their old stuff, like Neon Blue. Yep. That song's coming pop, being pop, picking up attraction again on TikTok, and I'm just as this. <laughs> nice. It works. Well, it's my so just your your normal self. Huh. It's like the, the normal you. It is normal me, but uh, see, I don't want to be dressed like this. I don't remember the accent, so there's not going to be any accent. <laughs> but that's okay. Ugh. I've been nervous about this interaction all day. All right. Oh, I was putting it in the wrong spot. I'm so tired. Or you would probably only get be the one to get this reference. This is like an episode of This Is Your Life. <laughs> Everybody just keeps coming out from behind the curtain. Yep. Is you're, Emil you're... at the yeah, that thing? hasn't presented himself yet, though. No. Okay. Or if yeah, I don't know how bad things go. Unless Emil is the room keeper. Da, da, da. <laughs> That'd be cool if he the was. Biggest reveal. Hello, chat. How is everybody? Mm. Yeah, Ward, I was scanning through videos. I saw that and I immediately thought of Couldn't find the episode with the Aranius. I, I vaguely remember it, but I don't remember like what the context of when we met her. Yeah. I don't remember half of the people, but those half of the people probably was before Frank and I. Yeah, I was gonna say this is like it just shows goes to show how much how many people we just flat out forgot about. Yeah, the the big Earth Elemental Titan. Yeah, Warren. He could probably take on the for the uh, Titan. The Titan construct. That, you know, what kind of role would you roll for one Titan? One Titan tries to grapple another.
this scene. That's this conversation. I am surprised that LA by night is still going on. It's going strong. <laughs> What's that? Okay, so when Geek and Sundry was a thing, they did a show called um, LA by a Night, and it was with, uh, they followed the rule set of Vampire of the Masquerade. So, like Townsend's One Shot, if you would recall. Yeah, okay, yeah. But it's a full series. It's called oh, okay. LA by Night. So. Oh, okay. Hi, Dan. Hi, Ryan. Dan. <laughs> Sorry for like bailing on the first half. Um, um, it, it, it was, it, it was a social thing that I needed to go to instead okay. of being picked up in my house. Oh, I see. It's all right. Glad you're here. I'm about mm. to grab a pumpkin. I haven't carved a pumpkin since I was a kid. That's so exciting. Nice. <laughs> I will take a picture and post it on the interwebs. Please, That's so yeah. messy. <laughs> I'm gonna take our BRB screen off. So many people alive tonight. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Where's our Oh alright, this is exciting. Okay, yeah, we had a um well I, I uh we had a fun segue for the Brixie meal. <laughs> but we survived. Uh but I think once we come back here, I'm gonna jump into that, so if you want to get your notes um, for the ones I sent anyway uh, in Facebook for um, Brixie, um, you'll know mm. <laughs> what, what, what she's got going on. <laughs> It'll be fine. You'll be great. Mm. <laughs> I was, um, Lily was asking about tonight's session earlier. <laughs> And just talk about all the different things, which I can't discuss here. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. <Yeah. clears throat> mm -hmm. But one of the things, you know, it's like, there's so many things I'm excited about. One of them was like, I was explaining uh, uh, Brixie and Emil. And I'm like, there's all these tiebacks into the campaign. And, and then we have like Brixie and Emil, and they were an item. And, you know, Brixie died, but this is the timey-wimey one. And so she's here. She you know, doesn't know. One. <laughs> she's the original this one. It's the original this is Brixie. Brixie Prime. Yes, it is. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> the Brixie all the way up to um, whatever city that was. Uh, maybe it was Zambora. Uh, what was the place? Or was Marketplace? it Blackrock? Might have been. Black I don't Rock. remember, but that. Mm. <laughs> uh, I miss my head, Dan. I know, I know. It's so I exciting. <laughs> I was I like, you know, <laughs> Brixie told the party, like, I'm going to find Emil. I can trust Emil. But if you're all lying to me about finding my parents and all this other stuff, then then forget it. You know, I'm coming back for you all. Um, and it's like, and, and poor Emil was crushed when, when the other, like, the Brixie that made it out of the time loop to travel with them died. And, like, it's another, like, earlier in the campaign tie-in like oh. Ugh, that messed with my head mm. dude mm -hmm. messed mm -hmm. with me <laughs> <sighs> oh. freak hmm. i'm gonna jump us back in because i know we've got plenty to cover uh anyone that's like listening but not back don't worry about it we're actually gonna jump into i think got the scene here for a meal on Brixie. Elsewhere, back on the Prime. Let me see if I can find the image here. Okay. There we go. All right, viewers, we're going to shift uh, back to the Prime here. And if I can get this image doing what I want it to here. 
The prime <clears throat> in a city of Black Rock Landing. Hmm. An overcast day. No rain. Nice and warm. The ocean's relatively calm, especially after all that happened here only a few weeks ago with a Kraken and uh, uh, a Zilk here. <clears throat> Standing vigilant here, monitoring tasks, uh, coordinating troop movements, information gathering, and the movement uh, and dissemination of information across spy networks. Emil stands. Um, gosh, where do you feel Emil would be in the city, Warren, currently? Usually, I mean, usually Emil's on the top of a building, but the building that stands out the most for Emil would be the, the hotel, which I don't think, I don't know that that really works. Cause that, was that one of the buildings that was destroyed? Um, it had, it, it had damage, but it was rebuilt. Renoir Tower. Mm -hmm. Renoir, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still stands today. Okay, I, I think, yeah, you know what, I think, I think Emil would be on the top of it, just taking, taking in the lay of the land. Okay, beautiful. Uh, so Emil, as you look out across um, the harbor here and most of the city, depending on which direction you, you pivot, um, the heavily magical powered uh, port city has different, um, Lighthouses uh, with focused arcane energies, light blue energies, a fuel source for many, many things here in the city. Ships are docking, others are leaving the bay. Um, <clears throat> the city is humming along smoothly, still being rebuilt, but uh, there's a sort of sense of peace and camaraderie, a sense of unison among most of the people that live here now as they go about their day to day making better lives for themselves and seeing the fruits of their labors. As you scan um, the horizon, um, there's plenty of seagulls and other bird life uh, that, that fly about here, but one catches your eyes a little bit larger than the others. And as it begins to get closer and closer, go ahead and make a perception check if you would, Emil, if you don't mind. Let me just pull up the character. Sorry. <laughs> it's been a while. Mm -hmm. That's right, it's got ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> nice. You may have to be the wrong level, but we'll we'll deal with that later. Um... Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 27 or so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I'd remembered, I wouldn't have even asked <laughs> how good he is at that. <laughs> Um, a very familiar form. Of course, Theo, of all people, of all the people that travel with Brixie, a very familiar form at first is just, okay, that's a tiefling in flight, mm, something to keep a careful eye on, but as you pass by in your next scan, when they're, you know, approaching closer still, still a few hundred feet out, geez, that looks like Brixie. Um, this figure... Uh, maybe a hundred feet out now. That's got to be Brixie. Whatever's, what do you feel might be going through your mind as, as you're seeing a figure that's that close and definitely looks like Brixie? Well, Emil had warning that that Brixie was coming, mm. and Emil is is Emil's life as a rogue, living on the streets of um, gosh, what was it, Savoy? No, it wasn't Savoy. It was Ren. Um, uh, Ren. Mm. He was he was always very careful and planned things out. So I think I think Emil is as ready as he can be for this moment, but perhaps not ready for this moment. 
On the other side of things, Brixie, you have been flying and flying and flying. You've used some magic. As you are a master of illusion magic, but that incorporates some other forms of, of magic. You're just a master of illusion. Um, <clears throat> to uh, track the meal. And you've been flying for... I mean, your arcane power, like Zulkir level right now. So you've just you've just been flying. You've teleported through where you knew you could teleport to make it to this continent, um, and you've probably been flying for you know a week or whatever it's been since uh, your encounter with everyone else. Still fresh in your mind, your old crewmates. Could Arzaman have really lied about that? Was that really not? Did they not leave you dead in the street and walk away? Was there really the the time loop you that got to travel with them? Did they really find your parents? You can't really trust them, but you know in your heart that you can trust them. And finally, after just with blind faith following this, this beacon that is telling you where a meal should be, Find uh, a figure atop Renoir Tower, far above the city. That's, I mean, it's a, a couple hundred, 280 feet, whatever it was, above the city. Um, beautiful, you know, great viewpoint, classic Emil. Finally, pushing through the light mist in the air. Wind rushing around you as you fly at full speed. See a meal, a meal that held your hand in that church long ago in this very city that you sh opened up to and shared your heart with <clears throat> no longer a beacon in the distance that you hope is there now a meal only a hundred feet away or so as you approach what do you think Brixie is feeling and as she approaches Ooh, hoo -hoo. uh <laughs> Whew. Um, who I don't know, <laughs> just like how I'm feeling right now. Mm, mm. As a player, I never thought I would get to play Brixie again. Mm. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like Brixie, once she's gonna get closer, mm -hmm. she's just gonna. Like maybe like 40, 30 feet up, mm -hmm. like close. She's just going to stop and just stare and just not say anything. Okay. Right. And that it's him. I'll let you two pick it up. Uh, Emil, you, you see Brixie stop about 30 feet. Just, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to add <clears throat> the, the current description of Brixie looking a little bit different. Um, just so you know, you know what you're saying. She has one eye with some scarring over it that's just a milky white, and her right hand is covered in burn marks that seem to run up her sleeve. And um, was that it? We. You... Um, hang on. I have my notes filled up. One moment, though. Oh, um. Uh. Right eye and um. Uh, right eyes, milk like mm -hmm. milky white hands, mm -hmm. arm, right arms, burn scars from fingers tips up to mid bicep and shoulder, mm -hmm. and a jagged scar across the left cheek. Mm, okay, so, so that's the description. And this Brixie stops 30 feet. It's told to expect you. I'm a meal. I just give an eye, and then I'm just gonna fly down to see. Because Brixie right now is just like, just like me, it's just filled with mixed emotions, whether to ask the questions or not. Mm. Um, Do you land so, atop yeah. the tower, or you just kind of like fly next to him, like off, just off the edge, like face to face? I was gonna fly down to the ground, but the top of the tower sounds good. Okay. So, like, Dan, can you describe the tower? Because I kind of forgot what the tower oh, looked sure. like. 
Uh, be completely honest. <laughs> no problem. It's uh, Renoir Tower. Well, it's in the center of sort of an open area with bridges that run across it, but it's like 280 feet tall or so. Um, it's it's that really fancy hotel. So it's effectively just a, a, a nice a nice architecture stone tower that you're standing on the top of. There's really nothing up here. Uh, so, is, so, like, is there like any point? Uh, like, just a flat roof on this. Okay, I'm gonna lie on top of the roof. I know who you are, but for obvious reasons, I don't know who you are. Again, my name is Emil. It's nice to meet you. You just don't hear anything. It just um uh, just a t just single tear just comes you don't see it but it's just like a single tear of whether just like anxiety and just doesn't don't know what to do obviously somewhat difficult you look like someone that I knew that died. I'm sorry to hear that. And then, you're not, if you're not her, who are you? Just from the past or the future. I don't really know. Are you a ghost? Are you? And Emil offers a hand to shake to maybe to see if you're actually like real and physical in there. I fly down to Emil and then I just extend my arm, my, my, my arm. My hand, golly, is a week. You feel that Emil will, take, Emil will take your hand, um, give it a gentle shake, look you right in the eye, and then give you a hug. Pull you in for a hug. Mm -hmm. I accept the hug. And then just waterworks, waterworks, waterworks. <laughs> What did they do to you? Well, that's a long story. Shorten it. I was told one story, and then I was told another. I think. I know something of this, but perhaps not the whole story. If I could ask Arzaman. You just see a shake. Just because from the, all the tears, um, I haven't, Brixie does not form any words. I, I apologize if I perhaps sound a bit like the cleric that I've become, but if I might offer you somewhat of an explanation from my own point of view. There are beings in many planes that delight in offering us things that we greatly desire for a price, a high price, but a price we would gladly pay for that thing that we desire. But very often the price, even though we would gladly pay it, is actually far more than the going rate. I'm told that you seek your mother and father. Is this true? Yes. Well, I can tell you because I have met them that they greatly desired to see you as well. 
um, when we encountered Arzaman, Arzaman tried to extract and successfully extracted a considerable price from us when in reality we could have gotten to your parents without having paid it had things fallen just a little differently. I suspect, though I don't know, that something similar has happened to you where Arzaman made you pay a price that you needn't have paid, but you didn't know you needn't have paid. And that Arzaman has led you astray. Does this anger you? Am I wrong? I don't know what to feel. Anger, sadness, joy, that's... What is it? What is it that you desire above all else? I just need another truth. That's all I desire. The truth about Arzaman, the truth about your parents, the truth about the war that's going on all around us. <laughs> Everything. Just everything. I'm just and you, words are just hard because it's just the waterworks just still coming. Well I will I'm sorry you just look so much like the last time I saw her and so much not like her. It, I will tell you as much as I know, and while my knowledge may not be perfect, it should at least set you on the right path to discovery. But if you know me at all, you will also know that with this war going on, my time is short and as much as I value the person you look like, I also need to be helping people right now. So our conversation will have to be somewhat brief. I understand. If, if I'm not able to answer all of your questions, I may perhaps be able to set you on the path to find your father. We know a tout in the city of Sigil who is very good at escaping attention and being forgotten. She could help guide you to your father as she wants to help guide us to your father. If I can only remember her. Look at Dan sitting there as though he has no idea what I'm talking about. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miranda. Oh, Miranda. <laughs> the most forgettable NPC in the entire campaign because yeah. everyone forgot about her. Uh, to listen here. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot about me that easily. We'll just assume it's some arcane power she has. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> She's just that good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have any questions for Emil, Rain? <laughs> Everyone told you that you i asked yeah mm -hmm. yeah i had a brain fart so uh -huh. i explained to emil like what everybody was explaining to mm -hmm. just to save time and mm -hmm. yeah 
Okay. So, yeah, basically, I explained to Anil what everybody told me that Erwin uh, accidentally kind of blew off my wing and they didn't, she didn't on accident. They didn't really leave me out in the middle of the street. So, mm -hmm. that, that, yeah, that, that's what Brixie's going to ask Emil next. I have no energy. Emil, Emil looks pretty shaken by the question. Um, oh, that was you. That story never made sense to me, but... Okay, actually, it still doesn't make sense to me, but at least now that one detail, I understand that was you. I have a, I have a question for you. I'm told that you have been given power by one who would kill us all. Do you stand with him? I frankly no. I was told Arzman told me one thing and I was given this power out of anger. Wanted to hurt the friends that love the other me more dearly. Because Arzaman told me that everybody abandoned me like my mother did. And now, quite frankly, I know probably that's not true. At the ability, it would send you to your mother this very day so you could hear the truth from her, but I have neither the ability nor the time. Glad you see things that way. Um, the, the Brixie that I knew would have stood with us against Arzaman, against Yathaz, against everything that besets this world now. Will you do that or? Will you go see your parents? I really haven't made up my mind. If the time, if there's a sign for me to stand with everyone, let it be. But if there's not, then I'll probably go seek my parents. Will you? I can't guarantee that you'll get a sign, but if you put your faith and he pulls a coin out of his pocket, we could leave this up to chance. <laughs> Why not? And Emil, Emil will actually, actually, he'll he'll also touch the uh, holy symbol of Hermod, God of Chance that hangs around his neck to make clear he's not just saying let's make it random he's mm. he's offering a chance to put faith in Hermod's guidance as to which path you could take if that's what you choose to do why not <laughs> there's never I will, that you I will warn you don't throw the coin off the edge of this building I've heard bad things <laughs> okay <laughs> what is it every day that you mess with the, the god of chance Okay, let's do it. Okay. Emil will hand Emerson of the coin. Um, heads, the war, tails, you your mother. Sorry, Brixie. Heads, the war, <laughs> tails, your mother. Here's the coin. Do you, uh, do you have an actual coin, Mariah, nearby? Oh, I should. 
<laughs> what would be better I feel than like that? we should, um, well, I have dice. 1 through 10, mother, and then 11 through 20, the group. Okay. Roll a D, roll it, or do evens, evens the war odds your mother. Okay. I like that better. Okay, it evens the war odds your mother. All right, it's an 18, so. Evens the war. <laughs> mm. You see the so, coin land on that side. Look up at a meal. Well, what do you know? Guess some bill will be fining. And you just see a little smirk. Mm -hmm. It will offer a quick silent prayer to her mod, hoping that the guidance was the, the correct one. And we'll collect the coin because we're not leaving the coin up here. <laughs> uh, as you head over to collect the coin, you know, near her feet, <clears throat> um, her smirk becomes frozen a little bit as you see Brixie. Brixie, you, you grab your chest a little bit as you feel something is like grabbing at your heart and squeezing your heart. Um, you feel racked by an intense pain that makes you drop to your knees. Or start falling to the ground. Emil here. You wanted to catch her when you think. Yeah, Emil will catch Neo Brixie. I don't know. We're running out of suit. <laughs> prefixes for Brixie. That's nice. <laughs> Brixie Prime. This is the original, original. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yeah. How and, many Brixies are there uh, now? <laughs> Brixie let out just a, 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 a scream of pain that fills what feels like the city as the power that Yathaz bestowed upon you is ripped out of you at your declaration of the war against Yathaz. Weak uh, and, and, and searing pain as though the, your soul has been ripped from your body, it feels like. That's just the power. Your soul's intact. <laughs> but it's that kind of tear uh, in a, a deep level that you just can't express. And it's left you a bit, you know, racked with pain and some sobbing. Your enemy is. Wait. This is a serious question. Mm -hmm. Do I have both of my wings? You still have both your wings. Okay, thank God. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, so you've collapsed into Emil's arms, racked in pain, without your power from your thigh. Do I still look the same? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think if there's if if either of you have anything. Please go ahead, otherwise I'll put a pin in us there if you want to end it and like a oh you know, who will have to do I think we'll we'll more or less pin it, but I think the one thing Emil will think is well crap, now I have to carry her down the side of the <laughs> building. <laughs> ah, perfection. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> um, I have one more thing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna stand up. Um, okay. and then just look at Emil. Just give him a slight, like, kiss on the cheek if that's okay with mm -hmm. you, Warren. Um, and then just brush off my wings and just say thank you to Emil for everything, for clarification. Not clarify. At, at, at the kiss, Emil is crying, but he'll nod a, a response. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for clarity, not clarification. Mm -hmm. Clarity. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Dan, I mm -hmm. know that last week we did like an all call. Mm -hmm. Would Brooksy at this time would hear somebody like make say Brooksy, would you come fight with us? Kind of thing. Because I remember last week we were going to put a pin on. You said that you're going to put a pin on that mm. since I wasn't feeling too well last week. Yeah. 
Um, I think that was more for this. Uh, I think that you'll have all the information you'll need from Emil, who can fill you in, but I don't think they were intending on calling you because they were going to see, like, how things went with you and Emil first. Okay. Um, you're, you're actually, you have, like, four and a half points of exhaustion. You, you took everything you had to stand up and say thank you before you just kind of lean forward and collapse um, into okay. Emil again. And okay. uh, as the camera zooms out <laughs> from the two of you on the top of the the tower, you know, we see they Emil. Spiral out. Yeah, yeah, scoop you up, you know, into whatever princess carry, whatever, yeah, and start walking you down the side of the tower <laughs> in his arms. Tears down his face, tears down yours. Okay. <clears throat> I can't with those hands. <laughs> <laughs> I really adopted them tonight. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, now that's over. <laughs> well played. I'm just before we jump over the other stuff. I'm, I'm not even gonna use my skeleton hands to do the clap. But well done. You do that. So nice to see. Thank you. <laughs> uh, back in Aiden set, <clears throat> uh, Winifred Dalka stands among everyone else. <sighs> Instagrams. Why do you keep resizing this? It's a, you're driving me nuts. Um, stands uh, uh, amidst everyone. Runekeeper passes by and sort of acknowledges her presence. This, um, <clears throat> well, I believe we're all here then. Um, yeah. Let us hear. Wait, your wait, wait! Actually, Erin has mm -hmm. been looking the whole time, seeing which one of her parents is going to arrive. Oh, oh, right, right. Okay, yep. <laughs> She's just mm -hmm. kind of like anxiously, like this is so life long mm -hmm. mystery. Do you, do you want to tell the rune keeper, like, wait, there's another? <laughs> yeah, she's gonna. Uh, wait, there was one, one more at least. Oh. Maybe. Oh. Very well. Can we wait like five more, ten more minutes? Looks around, kind of, you know, Sterling Sam's over there. <laughs> Neat. Um, so, uh, I have done some stuff in the background. So, if you'd like me to reveal that, I'm happy to. I left it open. I don't, ha I don't have no idea. I get, I hand this backstory to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good, good. Dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very nice. dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever do you mean? <laughs> Whatever, whoever it is, card, sir. whoever it is, whoever it is, though they are an ancient bronze dragon. Do not uh, play that card, sir. Whatever do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I know not of what you speak. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so um, a few more minutes goes by. Um, does anyone here um, want to talk to anyone else as, as you know, as you wait? I take it Emil and Brixie will not get there on time for this. Um, I'm going to say that that was a little bit before. So if the two of you are arriving, you'll definitely be able to arrive because you're like right you work with uh, directly under sterling sam so um you know how to get here <clears throat> uh so you two can definitely yeah i mean i i think it makes sense for emil to be there for this so like emil can throw brixie off a cliff and follow her or something i don't know but... <laughs> Dude, I have four level. Brixie has four levels of exhaustion. <laughs> Dude, it's it's fine. It's fine. That's how you get into this little sub plane. <laughs> you need to have four. Oh, I love that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, because I'm kind of in the unfortunate position where Rowan knows almost nobody and Emil knows almost everybody. So right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, as you're waiting, Erwin, you hear some footfalls. Uh, though it sounds like two people, maybe both your parents, um, and 
rounding the corner is Emil and Rixie. Right he looks a little weary, but she's there. Well, Erinwin's going to run up to Brixie to give her a hug. And then Armia is going to run over to Emil and, like, grab his hand and, like, the, you know, the the, the forearm grip. Just it's good to see her or, or Mia is the first person Emil would go to. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Good to see you, friend. Brixie just going to, like, just, like, be, like, very confused. Um, just like where she is, but seeing Ormia, uh, not Ormia. Good <laughs> grief! Too oh, many characters. Too many characters. It's a danger, <laughs> yeah, being endgame. Yeah, it is danger. Seeing um, Erwin, um, she's gonna whisper into Erwin, saying, "I forgive you." Yeah, sorry, I didn't know that was really. <laughs> Things were really crazy that day. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you just see a little smile? Mm. And then accept the hug after mm. like the confusion and oh, it's just Aaron. So. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> Emil will uh, and or me or me will take a meal over to the OG group to everyone there. Just kind of And we'll definitely hug a meal. Ah, uh, okay. Yes, we'll do that first. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and then what Back to their do? awkward, yeah. the awkward hug that they that they usually have. Nice. Glad you made it, Kaylin. Felix. It's good to I'm see here. you again. Great to see you. Emil will then step over and not even say a word to Amrosina, just offer a hug. Mm. She's <laughs> going to return the hug. Mm. <laughs> I love your skelly hands, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they kill me every time. <laughs> I'm so um. excited. You're like a T-Rex. You have these tiny, tiny little, yeah. little, little, little heads. Little, yeah. Big head, little <laughs> arms. Sure. How well this plan was thought through. Uh, nice. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Devanya's mm. eyes are going to get really wide at the sight of Brixie. Uh, simply because all, all she's ever known is what people have spoken of her yeah. oh, wow. you know what i mean so um while em is going to embrace brixie if she you know if they're okay with it um devanya is going to probably stare a little bit a little too long um with wide eyes and just <laughs> uh, um <laughs> i uh, i apologize Apologies. Um, I am. I am Devanya. I, I've only heard of you through your friends, with this group. I am. I am. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to stare, but you are the Brixie, correct? Mm -hmm. Um. um. And she'll she'll look over at Emil and for confirmation. Um, 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 I made a second one based off of what Moore said of what you look like. Uh, this is for you. And she hands you a figure of Brixie, of you. Mm. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I, I obviously take it. And, uh, yeah. And I, oh my goodness. I can't talk. So many, I, <laughs> it's a lot tonight. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, 
holy crap okay it's just split your brain into three different ways mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. compartmentalize <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> this is one character this is another <laughs> this is myself <laughs> yeah yeah don't forget to make that compartment that's <laughs> yeah. oh, that's oh awesome. my god oh, all right and then we'll give brixie a hug mm. turn the hug it's good to see you you too mm. i feel like rain is just standing just like not like giving everybody their respective spaces until mm-hmm. she locks eye with the meal. Mm, okay. This is rain, you said? Yes. Okay. I haven't mentioned rain all of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's like, <laughs> don't, don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm just going to. I'm just not, I'm, I'm just staying away. Just like, you know how like people just stay in one space and you are just trying to like, like look at your nails and stuff until they come up to you and they will go like, so, so kind of deal. <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm, nice. I'm waiting for Emil to walk. Emil will take a couple steps over, put one arm around Rain's shoulders and walk Rain into the circle of the party. So, well, as we walk in, I'm just like, so you, you're back. Right here. It's good to see you. And and Range just gonna look him dead in the eye and say, "Do not ever leave again without saying goodbye to me." I was a little bit salty about that. And then. I, um, um, if Emil accepts the hug, Rain's gonna give Emil a hug. Mm-hmm. Emil will say, "Well, I've had some training in intelligence, and I'll file that one away for the future." And Emil will accept the hug. <laughs> nice. Emil will also, as as everybody's just kind of congregated, he'll make sure he makes eye contact with Winifred Delka and gives her a nod since <clears throat> she is his. Patroness. I don't know what the word we should be using is, but mm, yeah, right, yeah. He'll, he'll acknowledge her presence. Mm-hmm. She'll she'll do the same, and and the she's had she has just this cold stare that she kind of uses, uh, not intentionally or in an intimidating way. It's just her presence and power. But there's and because she's a vampire. Power. Yeah, that a little bit. Resting vampire face. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you know. You've seen and talked to her enough where you, you can see some of the smaller micro expressions and stuff. So you see that a little bit of that warmth when she regards you back. Um, so I wrote for Blueberry, who's going to come up to Brixie. <clears throat> um, excuse me, Blue, um, Brixie. Um, do you have a moment? Mm-hmm. Um, so. Uh, this is a li- uh, a bit awkward. Okay. When I just thought that um, since you're looking for a family, that um, you should know if we didn't tell you already. That um, well, when the other you passed away she left behind a little floating leaf had a seed attached that that Kaylin found its way over to Kaylin Um, and when we got back to the keep we thought as we held a service for you the other you and planted this seed to so part of you, her, would always be with us at the peak. Um. So the thing is, things got uh, you know as they do with us, a uh, little bit out of what we were expecting, and um, 
Well, uh, that seed grew into a, a plant just a few feet, few feet tall. But then, um, uh, you remember Azalea, right? From the keep, she had the sword and comes out of the trees like, oh, it's me. Do I do? Yeah, yeah, Brixie would remember Azalea. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so she just gave the plant her blessing, sort of. And um, the plant ended up just sort of growing into, I guess, another Brixie? We were calling her pseudo Brixie because apparently it's not like an actual you, her. It's more like um, her child, sort of. Uh, it's like a um, not quite a clone, but like there was Brixie, and then pseudo Brixie was like from her that was grown into another looked like Brixie, but didn't have any of Brixie's memories or anything. It was just a sort of a child. So she, she was also looking for your parents, and we sent her over there. So um, <clears throat> you have a sister-daughter, and they're with your parents. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay. Do you want a treat? I, I have some treats back here. <laughs> I think I'm good, Blue Bear, but thank you. And I'm just going to... Uh, stick my hand out so Blueberry can like sniff. Put their paw on your hand. And if Blueberry allows me, I'm just gonna lightly just scritch. Oh, mm, Blueberry's like, it's, it's nice. I'm glad you're here. I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Blueberry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they have those hands. <laughs> Giving you too much power. Yeah, for they real. are. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> um, wow. I know. <laughs> Magnificent. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Are they going to arrive together or is it just going to be. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Um, oh my gosh, uh, I don't have the color of your dragon heritage of its brass. Uh, bronze. Is it? Bronze, okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> well, uh, another sound of um, a rather large set of wings. Not not with quite the same thunder as the room keepers, but not really that far off. Uh, <laughs> you hear outside the, the other... Um, exterior wall balcony <laughs> and you can see fly across view um, a large form that you imagine now as a dragon it looks very similar to the room keepers and it seems to circle around a bit before landing down on the one ground. runs to the balcony <laughs> nice. dun, 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 dun. and in dragon form you know <laughs> landing um, uh, an ancient bronze dragon um it's yeah. Aaron when you're you're running up to them and they see you and they're walking over to you. And as they're walking towards you, they shift down into their form and um <clears throat> adorning the scales. Um a rather um simple but uh beautiful style of um not quite a dress, but it's 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 farm attire, but like when your folks like to go out. <laughs> and and uh you know so still linens but it's very fine style um adorning your mom's form your mother's form <laughs> she just goes and just gives her big mm, hug she tries to lift you a bit with a hug too mm. um, it was you this whole time <laughs> uh, yes Evelyn. Uh, oh my sweet <laughs> yes Oh, everyone's just crying now. Just holding oh, her mom. Yeah, yeah, she's kind of like stroking. Dad, stop it! <laughs> I commit to the bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. 
Oh, uh, Aaron Rene. Well, um, certainly there's no grander way to uh, share this with you than at the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> I hope you're not. I hope you're not disappointed that it's not your father. <laughs> Why would I be disappointed? <laughs> well, um, come I'm, on, come on, come on. There's food in here. And your friends? Yes. Oh yes. I'll walk bigger <sighs> over. Everyone. <laughs> this is my mom. Hello, mom. Everybody. This is everyone. <laughs> It's oh, it's a delight, and I hello, and and she kind of like goes around one person eagerly at a time, introducing herself. <laughs> I guess oh oh you're okay then you know and, and kind of like in each person here you know with the tails yeah you're, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. absolutely. Yes. Erin's the one who, who calls her mom <laughs> once a week and is like mom, guess what just happened? Nice nice <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Garrick, yes. Do you have your best sweater, llama? I, 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 I. All right, all right. Oh. <laughs> Opens up the, uh, oh, the drawing like... circle. <laughs> Come here, Geraldo. Mm -hmm. And then Geraldo <laughs> kind of peeks out. Mm. <gasps> it's so cute. My mind is blown. <laughs> it's so. <laughs> oh, this is. Um, right, and... right. <laughs> Incredible engineering, um, um, Garrick, and, and, and the sweater is marvelous. Oh, oh. Do you have you a... You guys can see where Erin Wynn gets, like, mm -hmm. her personality from. Yeah. <laughs> what what the... And she should go over to the not, next one. Not, yeah. not that much, not that oh, okay. much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, okay, now, so the Rune Keeper would probably, at this point... Um... <clears throat> Look at Aaron when I believe. Sorry. No, why don't I? I'm glad. Um, uh, make a quick insight and a perception check first, Aaron, please. <laughs> perception. Take out a 20. New dice. Uh, perception's a 14. Mm. Is it a dragon thing? It is a dragon thing. Mm, Do yeah. I get advantage because I'm half dragon? <laughs> I'm gonna, given the situation, I'm gonna give you advantage. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> fourteen. <laughs> it's dead set on a fourteen. Okay. Uh, make a, an insight check at disadvantage if you want. Oh, oh Dan, I have minus one. Oh no. <laughs> well, I rolled a natural twenty, so nineteen. <laughs> okay, nice. All right. <laughs> Um, okay. So, um, you almost miss it. So you're, even with the insight, you're, you maybe, but you're not quite sure. There's almost a hint of familiarity as the room keeper kind of nods across to everyone and passes your mom. And these are roles I've done and some backstory stuff that may or may not ever get touched on. But I don't want you to think I'm like, all oh, dragons know each other or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 just all metallic not. dragons know each other. Yeah, nice, Duh. nice. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So everyone was just kind of like... Was that? Did I see that? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. Focus. <laughs> nice. Uh, everyone begins to sit down and... The room keeper sort of you know, lasts along with all of you. I don't know if you're all standing or sitting, but the room keeper nods to all of you to kind of, you know, give you the floor. Um, time to make your, you know, plea or whatever you want to do or, or ask about. You know, everyone's here, so they're probably going to be here fighting for you, but probably looking to know what do you want them to do? What do we, you know, what's the plan? What do Kayla you looks to more like, please don't make me <laughs> <laughs> i just have uh, all these people on the call i do not want to give this speech as well <laughs> more, more, i'll return the look and you know in in life in real life you would have taken the laptop offer and started the powerpoint up mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll cast minor illusions so everyone can see yes. um 
<laughs> this is just as before. Click. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Ancient Demi Lich, <laughs> asshole, uh, <laughs> who seeks <laughs> ancient power that is located in Click Gascony. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. I hope this is suddenly become like a cop drama, like presentation, like yeah, to the troops. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Mm. Unfortunately, we don't have a a one yard wide weak point to shoot a. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A laser down to, to blow up the Death Star, but uh, awesome. Um, mm. seeking great power that can be allegedly found in Gaskin in uh, some some access way. He has created a huge Titan-like creature. With a tower on its head. If at all possible, we can't let them reach Gascony and their goal. He seeks godlike powers, which must not be allowed to succeed. He's already done far too much damage across the lands, of this, most of you can attest to. Power cannot go unconfronted. It's my understanding. I think uh, every uh, the, uh, we will be concentrated on getting access to the tower on top of the Titan and confronting Yathaz at its source. But all others should be, I guess, concerned with doing whatever they can to make sure this Titan does not reach its destination. Um, jeez. Probably blanking on his name. Um, oh my gosh, why can't I think of the kid's name? Okay, uh, Dan, uh, split your brain into 30 different components. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One per NPC. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Kylos, oh my gosh. Oh, that's awesome, Sam. <laughs> Gus, um, just a, a quick question. So I, uh, it's my understanding that from the information shared that there's different cities that are under attack. Some aren't anymore and others still are. Um, are any of us to to try and assist the cities with that? Uh, or just the cities are doing all right on their own? Um, I think that, that would be wise by all means. It seems like it would appear that these attacks were to a solidify and train and bring up his Zalkiris. Two of which, two or three? Three you've defeated so far. Three I mean, including Bertsy. Right. Either defeated or um, eliminated from the... But, um, for certain, there are innocents and lives being lost at the hands of these warring Zalkiris. Mm. Um, and, yeah. I think any assistance you can give to the efforts of stopping this bloodshed uh, would help the effort. I think, I don't know if the powers they wield, eliminating them have any effect on Yathaz, but it may. Um, it's certainly, we shouldn't let a threat to those cities go unanswered. Um, well, I, uh, and he's looking through a pamphlet that Sterling Sam has put together for everyone. <laughs> um, well, I see that Zambora is under attack. Um, we can, you know, with, with, uh, their council's permission, uh, he, he looks over, you know, sort of at Scarlet, who's, you know, <laughs> watching and listening. <laughs> yeah, he perks up at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we can send forces, uh. Our militia as much as as we can afford <clears throat> from black rock landing to 
help them through through we can teleport from uh, our college to theirs if, if um it, dan or mia would have been <laughs> with her father helping oh, to keep yeah. the city safe so what does she know in regards to how mm. the city is doing city's doing moderately well uh the undead have recently joined the other forces that were there um and some of them are flying but for whatever reason they haven't like flown over an attack there's been like testing test 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 the wall uh but <laughs> they haven't like pushed through <laughs> uh they haven't pushed through the wall yet um or done like a full-on attack for whatever reason Okay, so Armia will lean back. Part of the problem is, at least as far as Zambor is concerned, um, is the undead. Oh. Uh, so the thing is, though, undead... Correct me if I'm wrong, but if we take out Yathaz, then the undead won't be a problem. Typically, yes. So... The C Zambor is doing well enough. We're mm. <laughs> we're all right for the moment. I think, mm. in my opinion, all of our forces should be concentrating on stopping Yathaz and the Titan. We need mm. to protect Gascony. Mm. Uh, we also have Kalar. Uh, I think that they're doing pretty badly. If I remember correctly. Um, yes, it's been difficult to get word out of mm -hmm. out of there. We don't, yeah. One can assume the worst, but we should find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you've heard nothing about Ornir Kalar up in Tegredoth. You know that Gascony's yeah. long since fallen, but the city. The I notes just I have from them. Kalar from the twenty first of August was the battle at Main City. So Kier has taken all of their clans from Tegredoth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. To march on. Yeah. yeah. Rain, did you have something? I'm sorry. Rain, Adol, Brixie. As Brixie, being a former Zolkir, mm -hmm. would Brixie know anything about oh. like the power since it's just youth? It has. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. It has bestowed it upon her and then just took it away. Um, so you didn't really, I mean, no one knows any of the other parts of the plan. So all you knew was like your deal with it has. Um, you did know that the power you were given gave you mastery over one school of magic. So you had mastery over everything illusion with a couple of other little things tr trickled in. Um, <clears throat> you got all your, you know, druid stuff and everything else, uh, still just kind of pushed towards the back. Um, but that's, that's probably all, all you know. Okay. I would just rely that minus being a Zalkir, a former Zalkir, mm -hmm. I would relay that to the group. And then, Brixie, you're just gonna go off, like, a little bit away from the group just to see what magic she still has like her like her druid magic if it's completely back or not okay oh, you can test even under the table if you want a little bit of the uh um I'll do druid craft. craft yeah yeah kicks yeah you can ropes. yeah <laughs> jeez is there, is there a fire under the table <laughs> Um, nice. I think like to just test it out. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like Brooks would remember drink crafting a meal dice, so I'm gonna try to craft some dice. Okay, just like mm -hmm. a single d6. Yeah, works just fine. Okay, and then I'm just gonna Brooksy's just gonna keep that in the palm of just in her hand okay. as a familiar familiar. Golly, a familiar, mm -hmm. a familiar, mm. you know what I mean. Yeah, we do, yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. Um, I think Lilith will probably follow up, Lilith Cascuri. 
Um, so, um, uh, Mortimer, is that, is that the plan then? We, we're all to coordinate with, with the beast and, and, or, and uh, leave the cities um, as they are. I'm prepared to follow your lead. Um, can I do a quick, you make the call history or arcana check, all of I've been studying about Zalkiri. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, if we cut off the head of the Hydra, so to speak, does, would that short circuit the power mm -hmm. to the uh, Zalkiris that mm -hmm. is bestowed upon them? Uh, I'll let you choose either history or arcana. All right. It doesn't matter really, but okay. Yeah, it doesn't. I just realized. Okay. We'll go on. <clears throat> arcana since it seems to be more of an arcana thing. 18. So from, uh, because, you know, I, I know you've, you've, you've stated I'm looking this stuff up in already, you know, uh, throughout role play, I'll say that with the 18, <clears throat> um, you know that, you know, if Githaz is like killed, absolutely Zulkirs will lose their power. Um, if he is uh, killed, but he has a phylactery, it's uncertain. Um, if he is banished instead of killed, it's likely that they won't have connection to the power, but it's not 100% sure. It's like 90% sure. Um, out of like the three options that are popular that might come up in your research. Okay, so my reply would be yeah that if we are successful and destroy Yathaz and his phylactery that will end the Zalkiri's power and those undead will simply fall to the wayside if for some reason we fall short of that then it's unknown whether or not the Zalkiri will retain their powers or not but One thing I can pretty much guarantee, if we don't stop Yathaz reaching his goal, he will become even more powerful. And we might lose any hope of stopping him. So I think... Yeah, we should concentrate our efforts on stopping, stopping him. And finding... Maybe even we have a very strong reason to believe that his phylactery is located somewhere in Gascony. If we have the opportunity on our way there, the group, our group, will certainly make that a priority. But if anyone else finds that, they should destroy it on site. Hmm. And again, click and shows that picture of the phylactery nice nice awesome <laughs> and it projects for everyone and and as as you kind of walking around the table like a good presenter uh <laughs> you kind of repeat like so i think we we need to stop if as uh, or he's gonna gain power far beyond anything that you know, I, I forget how you worded it but sort of we have to stop him or he's gonna gain become even more powerful uh, to a degree, which if we, we won't be able only to... strike him down, he'll become more powerful than we can imagine. <laughs> Amazing, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and it's as you're walking around the table, like, uh, and behind you is the open balcony with the sun beaming in, and so there's like you're sort of a silhouette with this light around you. As you're like, we have to do this. That's where we'll wrap up tonight's session. Um, woo. Woo. fun in the sun tonight. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! so many people yeah. uh, so many people we forgot about good lord right it's well, so if, much has been done a, yeah, yeah three-year also... campaign over close to four yeah yeah yeah, yeah we hit our yeah. four yeah we're officially four now yep wow i think right we're yeah, four years old guys right. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Yeah. it was four <laughs> halfway through september right wow. right four years we've been running so for all the new folks here tonight, I, even before I get into that, let me just say thank you, players. Uh, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. My, you my and pleasure. Your power, you're in your powerful hands. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> the little thank skelly you hands. So much. Mm -hmm. 
uh, so putting up with this for four years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just for being a part of this for four years. Uh, it's, it's incredible. Gosh. Uh, and for viewers, this is this is our longest running campaign on the channel, Stormfall. As you can tell, we're right here in the home stretch. It was so fun. Uh, and it is so fun because it's ongoing here to bring like all of these characters. You've made such an impact around this world in the Feywild and otherwise to be able to call upon them and have them have you interacting with everyone here um, at, in the end. Um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, new folks, thanks for joining us here tonight. And, and, and folks that have been with us, you know, the whole four years, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. <laughs> um if you had fun i consider in in uh, your new or otherwise uh and haven't followed yet consider giving us a follow if you would we have um this campaign stormfall every friday night 10 p.m to 1 a.m eastern and i'm gonna bring up our schedule here you can see we have a ton of dnd um in this 10 p.m to 1 a.m eastern time slot um every night of the week except thursday but twice on saturday we get the six uh, before well. you Mm -hmm. uh, before you get in, I want to say thank you for to Dean Lanes for the 19 months resub. 19 months, Daniel. Thank you. That's incredible. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Okay, Love your support. Sorry. Thank you. I, no, that's great. I appreciate that, Ryan. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, we love having you all here. So if you enjoyed it and like the content, consider giving a follow. You can catch some more. Um, again, you've been watching Stormfall, or high drama, in case you couldn't tell. D&D uh, <laughs> &D campaign every Friday night, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern. Um, we're going to go raid our friends over at Perception Studio. Please consider giving a call, call, Mad Bird raid um, for some props and community support and a little bit of branding. Um, take care, everyone. We'll catch you all soon. Well, hopefully next Friday. Take care. Bye. Bye. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yeah.